Hello, this is Daniel from Hellbeam Design. Watch this video as I show you how to make your own floating shelves. Then I'm gonna show you the strongest way to mount them on your own wall. During this video you will learn all the steps and how to make your own jigs to be efficient in your work. You'll also learn the classic mistakes and get tips on how to be a better homeowner. These shelves turned out much better than I first thought. Welcome. My goal with these shelves is to create something stylish and durable for my own pantry. That are the perfect height to make it easy to organize. To measure the inside dimensions of the pantry, I use a laser measurer. This is from Stanley and it has a very good accuracy. 62 centimeters. When I have the measurements, I transfer this to my less good measuring stick. I draw a line with my speed square to make it easy to saw the board down to the correct length. Wear ear protection. You deserve it. This saw is plenty powerful and it cuts straight enough. However, it is too big for me now and when I'm editing this video, I have sold it and bought a new one. Then it's time to create a nicer edge with my router. In this case, I make it 45 degrees just to stick to the Nordic style. And after I've done all the edges, I sand the entire shelves up to 220 degrees. This is how the shelves will be attached to the wall. I use threaded rods that I insert into the shelf plane and into the studs behind the wall. This will make it really strong. About this far into the wall you need if the stud is directly behind the plasterboard. This vise cost me about $17. When I buy threaded rods I always buy them in lengths of about 2 meters as I can easily cut these myself to the right length with my angle grinder. To cut these you can use a cheap hacksaw. However, I prefer to use the angle grinder, as it is much faster, as you can see here up on the left. I like working with hand tools, but power tools are often better in every way. Buy yourself an angle grinder, you deserve it. One of these threaded rods I will accidentally replace with dire consequences, which you will see later in this video. These threaded rods hold much weight for their small size. Here you can see a very simple drill template for drilling exactly 90 degrees. It has a hole for 6mm and a hole for 8mm. To make one, all you need is a speed square, a pencil and a drill. You start by taking a measurement, in this case 2cm, which you mark out and then you draw a line across to the other side, where you also mark out 2cm. It is important that these two points are done exactly opposite of each other, so that the piece is ready for the next step. Here you can see the marking. Then I take my drill and start drilling straight into the material. You can use the help of an angle here, but I want to do it freehand to show you that it can be done without the help of other tools. Perfect result. Now I have a hole that goes 90 degrees straight through the piece of wood. Drill some residue out of the hole and then check yourself. Best is to use a simple angle iron. To give you an idea how durable these shelves will be and how they will be attached to the wall, I will show you first with the help of some clamps and some leftover pieces of the studs. To screw the rod into the stud, I use two nuts that I screw onto the rod and then lock with two U-ring keys by turning them against each other. For my new drill I bought a 13mm socket that fits the nuts perfectly. And with this socket I can screw these rods into the stud at high speed. Then I remove the nuts. Just by feeling the rod now you can see how durable it is. And this is only 8mm thick. If you have thicker shelves you can use thicker rods for more strength. Next step is that we take our shelf and mark out where the holes need to be. Then I mark out the back of the shelf exactly in the middle. In this case the shelf is 18mm thick, which makes the center 9mm. It is important to do this correctly as we have quite small margins as the rod is 8mm thick. Then we take our drill template and drill a 8mm hole in the back edge of the shelf, same size as the rod. You drill the rest of the hole to the correct depth without the drill template. 
Then, when you have made both holes, it's time to put the shelf on the rods. Sometimes it can be difficult to push the shelves in. This is good, this means that they will be firmly attached later. Then I test the strength of the shelf. And as you can see, they become very strong. To stain the shelves, I use Osmo 3161. It has very good protection against liquids and stains. Buy a real can opener, instead of using a screwdriver. You and your paint can are worth it. After you have opened the can, mix the pigmentation thoroughly to prevent spots. Then I usually spread the wax with a stick, but you might as well use a cloth. And then spread out a good amount of wax on the material, so that the whole piece is covered. Then you wipe off the excess with a cloth, and immediately we see the fine grain that the pine gives with this ebony coloring. This is a quick process, however, it needs to dry for about 24 hours. And while they are drying, I can show you where they will be installed later. Before that there was a cleaning cupboard there that uh, we tore out to create an open and large pantry. To find the studs, I use a stud detector. When the light turns green, it has found a stud, or something else, that you can easily mark out in the hole. I can really recommend buying a stud detector. Then I draw a straight line between my markings. And marks out at which height the shelves should sit. And then I mark out where I need to drill the holes for the threaded rods so that they hit a stud. This can be done with a level, but lasers are cooler. Buy yourself some lasers, you deserve it. Then I make the holes for the threaded rods. I make these holes a little bit smaller in diameter than the threaded rod, so it's forced to sit very tight. In order not to drill the rods in too far, I take a measuring stick alongside to ensure that nothing goes wrong. Don't forget to check for 90 degrees. Then I paint over all the marks created with a wall paint. Then I mark out where the holes should be drilled on the, these shelves. If you'd learned something and watched this video so far, I would be really happy if you subscribe to my channel. I will really appreciate it. My goal with this is to show you that you don't need expensive tools to create nice things. And I will continue to make more videos and I recently acquired some interesting wood for one of my next builds. And if you want to learn how to make furniture with DIY tools, you've came to the right place. Thank you for watching this video. If you have the space, buy a real drill to make these holes. These holes are the same diameter as the rods, which will create such high friction in the rods that you don't have to do anything else for the shelves to sit tight. Here you can see how the pantry looks with all the threaded rods installed. And to knock in the shelves, I use a rubber hammer, which is gentle on the material and doesn't damage it. And you don't have to wear hearing protection compared to using a regular hammer. This is the strongest way on how to mount these uh, shelves. During the assembly, the shelves were scraped a little bit uh, against the walls. Pro tip for all the homeowners, to be a good homeowner, you should always have a can of wall paint at home. And now we can see the final result of the floating shelves. I think these floating shelves fit this style of pantry well. If you uh, like the end result as well, watch this video to the end. You will enjoy it. This is a very easy product to do at home for yourself. 
Now you have all the information you need and if you choose to make floating shelves like these or have any other questions, please write in the comment section on this video. I have so far replied to all my comments and I will continue to do so. You can follow me on Instagram or here on YouTube to get a heads up when it's time for the next video. And in the meantime, you can also watch my other videos. Thanks for watching and see you again soon. And for you who watched this uh, whole video, I will show you what happens if you mix up your threaded rods. The day after I installed the shelves, I went downstairs early in the morning and I saw this on the other side of the wall. This is a very easy repair as I only had to replace the threaded rod with the right one and put some wall repair on the hole created by the rod. Thank you for watching this whole video. Bye.